My name is Pastor Steve Edmiston. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Lutheran Church near Genera, Ohio. And we are here together to celebrate the fact that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue our celebration of Easter, which for us as Lutherans isn't just a day and it's not just a week. It is a, a week of weeks. It is a way for us to celebrate the truth and the power and the joy that comes from knowing that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we gather once again here on YouTube as we can be together this way, even though we can't be together in church. We are hoping that perhaps we can regain or rejoin together once again in worship for Mother's Day, but we will need to continue listening to what comes from the governor's office and from the local people. But we are hoping once again to be able to gather together as God's people. But we gather now and we join together now on this third Sunday in our season of Easter. And we, we give thanks to God and we worship our risen Lord. And that worship now begins with the prayer of the day. Oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading for this week comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Luke in the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, that is that first Easter Sunday, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and taking with each other and talking with each other about all these things that had happened while they were talking and discussing Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what are you discussing with each other while you walk along they stood still looking sad then one of them whose name was Cleopas answered him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had left, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, he has appeared to Simon. Then the two who had gone to Emmaus told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them. 
the breaking of bread, the gospel of our Lord. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The promise of Easter Sunday, the promise that comes from both the angels and from Jesus himself, is that the risen Christ goes before us. The challenge, the call to us who love him, is to go out and find him. Now that can seem an easy thing to do, especially if Jesus walks into a locked room with words of peace and a joy-filled welcome. That's some of what we saw in the gospel story last week. Into the confusion and into the inertia that it had the disciples gathered in fear, Jesus enters with peace. And with a purpose. Now maybe Jesus knew that it would take more of a jump start with their purpose. More than, more than just some women saying that there was good news. That, that Jesus was alive. This week we get another story from that first Easter day. Another example of Jesus Entering into lives with transformation, with love. It's another moment that, that can help to inspire our resurrection lives as followers of Jesus and as children of God. You see, because on the same day as the Marys were, were meeting Jesus in the, discard, in the garden, we discover that two of them were walking to Emmaus. Two of them, two of the followers of Jesus is what we are led to believe. Two of those who are called to remember Jesus' promise to rise again. Who are called to go and find Jesus who goes before them to Galilee and then out into that world. Two of these of people like us who have heard the good news that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. They are leaving Jerusalem and heading home. At least that's what we're led to believe. They're leaving Jerusalem, probably scared, more than a little confused, sad, grieving, and as they walk, they talk, because they're trying to figure out what happened. <coughs> as followers of Jesus, they had heard and seen amazing things in Jesus' ministry. They had seen miracles. They had heard parables. They had watched as Jesus took the time to care for the outcast and the forgotten. They had also been there when all of these wonderful things, these gracious things that Jesus did were used against him. They saw as the leaders of the Jewish people falsely accused and wrongly convicted Jesus. They knew that Jesus had been brought before the Roman governor and sentenced to be crucified. They knew that this humble, caring, gentle man that they had followed was executed between two bandits and died. They were puzzling together how this could happen. How could Jesus the personification of God's love in their eyes. How could Jesus be dead? How could anything that Jesus had taught or done or stood for continue now that he was gone? They were walking, talking, mourning, and trying to discover what could come next. In walks Jesus. 
See, Jesus catches up with them on the road as they're walking and talking and discussing. And he sort of asks his way into the conversation. And then Jesus does what Jesus does. See, Jesus is actually going ahead of the disciples. And he's walking beside these two. So Jesus cares. Jesus teaches. He explains. He opens up to them the scriptures so that they could see the truth of God's love shown in Jesus himself. I truly wish that I could have heard that conversation. As Jesus points to all of the gracious ways that God has been working with us, pointing us to love our neighbor and to love God, Jesus is helping these disciples to understand what happens next. Jesus is beginning to show them the so what of his resurrection and the so what of their lives and ministry now that Jesus is risen. It's just that they don't really know it. They don't see Jesus for who he is. Not until then. You see, they stop in Emmaus and they invite their guests to share a meal and a hospitality. And when they're at the table, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And it was just like a, a peekaboo moment. They finally saw Jesus. They knew that he was risen from the grave. And all the things that they had learned that day took on a whole new depth of meaning. And all of their new understanding was enriched because they knew that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. They knew now that they had a mission, a ministry, that they could really go out and love their neighbor and follow Jesus. And the two of them were so excited that they ran back to town to tell everyone. You see, the risen Christ went ahead just like he promised. And the risen Christ walked beside them as he had promised. The risen Christ taught and showed them the possibilities that are now ours, now that we are on this side of the resurrection. See, the Messiah came so that we might see him teach and help, suffer, die, and rise again. And that makes all the difference. You see, the risen Christ goes before us into the world. Now, sometimes it can be hard to see him, hard to find him. Jesus has given us clues on where to look and guidance on how to behave as we find the risen Christ in the world. And that guidance that we receive is to love. But you see, Jesus is with us as well, walking beside us, helping us to understand the power of God's love for us, the power of God's love lived through us. Whether we suffer for the sake of another, whether we care for another, whether we feed or assist, walk, or even just walk beside those who need the presence of God, Jesus goes before us and we can see him. Jesus walks with us so that we might follow him. And Jesus is with us here in this moment when we are together in worship, but also when we are at home, or at work, or on a walk, or at the store. The challenge of Easter, the challenge for us this Easter season, 
is to see Jesus in all the places where he is. For Jesus goes out into the world before us. But he also walks beside us. He is with the outcast and the friend. And he wants us to discover the delight in seeing him in all the places where he is. Jesus isn't playing peekaboo, but Jesus is delighted when we look for, when we find him, when we help and care, when we forgive and love one another. Jesus is with us, and may we all find ways to see him this week and always. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. We gather to meet our risen Lord and we lift up our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who need God's love. Risen Christ, as we come to see you, may your resurrection glory fill us with light and life so that we might carry your good news of love and forgiveness everywhere we go. Heal those who are sick. Help all to regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents us from working together and hampers neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no border. Come to us who are gathered as we are able, and help us always find new and appropriate ways to celebrate, live, and share your resurrection and your life. Dear Lord, we remember before you our colleagues in ministry and all that they do to spread the good news of your resurrection. Bless and be with Songo Bele Lutheran and her subparents at Fogoro. Be with the Navajo Lutheran Mission, with St. John, Good Hope, Mission Possible, and all the congregations of the Northwestern Ohio Synod. Grant us all the inspiration to bring your dreams to life. Risen Lord, many people call on you in need, and you hear our prayers always. We pray that you would bless all who struggle with pain, disease, troubles, and trials. We ask that you would bless these that we know who need your presence. We pray for Ted, Lee, Penny, Lori, Joseph. We pray for Brooke and her family, Chris, Amy, and Kay. We pray for Jennifer and David. We pray for the family and the friends of Bruno Marosher, for Peggy, Nick, Justin, Matt, Logan, Colin, Ben, and Kyle. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness are only a few. Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure, persist, and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Blessed risen Lord Christ, our lives are filled with your love, with your brightness, grace, and favor. Make us instruments of your peace and love and give us hope that your dream for creation will be our heart's desire. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
life-giving God. You have touched us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through the peace you give, you have opened to us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Once again, it is good for us to be as together as we are able. I hope that all of you are remaining safe. We are looking forward to perhaps opening the doors and worshiping together here in the worship space for Mother's Day, May 10th. But we will still need to listen to the guidelines that come to us from the governor and others. It is our hope, our wish, our, our prayer that we will be able to see one another. But until that point in time, let us remember that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So let's go with Christ into the world to celebrate, live, and share. Stay warm, stay dry, stay safe, be healthy. And we will see you another time.